Hi everyone and welcome to another video of differential equations. So I believe that by now we've actually dealt with all the different types of differential equations that I've had in this video and I believe that we are actually set and we've actually had a firm understanding of every single concept. So now in today's video we shall be dealing with applications of differential equations. So there are going to be several applications that we're going to deal with in this one mega video. So it'll be all different applications. So this is going to be a full package for you and I believe that after this video you'll have a firm understanding of differential equations. All right, let's learn something new. All right, so we move on to the applications of differential equations. So the best concept of differential equations is the rates of change. First order differential equations can be applied to real world systems because most systems work on rates of change. So we're going to actually apply that in very many uh, situations, whether it's population increase, whether it's a decrease in population, uh, and very many other situations, decrease in temperature, increase in temperature, so something like that. So basically, this is a video that we should get into after we've actually finished all the other first four videos that we've actually done. So this is basically part five of differential equations. So what are some of these applications that we can apply differential equations to? So one of them is rate of growth or spread of a specimen or population. Another one is rate of cooling of a specimen. Another one can be rate of decay of a radioactive particle. Another one is rates of change of distance or speed. Another one is gradient of a function, draining tank, economics and finance, series circuits, and many more. Now the most important thing to note is that all applications of differential equations are solved using the same steps. So the steps are going to be basically the same and I think that's why it's going to be easy. So that's what's going to make it easy. So the steps are basically the same and then when we solve them we're actually going to be using the knowledge of separable differential equations just as you saw in video number two. So that's going to be the most important thing for you to remember. All right, so like in most cases, we're going to be first finding the value of C, the constant C, when the time is zero. Then the next step after that, we'll be finding the value of K. And the value of K will actually depend on the first, uh, the first circumstance first given. And then using C and K, we shall actually be able to find the other unknown. So that's basically going to be the pattern. We shall be finding C, then we find K and on and on. So it's just basically going to be a repetition of each one. So let's look at the first circumstance. All right, so let's check on to number one. So we're going to be dealing with rates of growth. Let's deal with those examples that actually deal with rate of growth. So the first question is a question from Ineb 2010, and this is question number 16. So I've been told that a bacteria in a culture increases at a rate proportional to the number of bacteria present. If the number increases from 1,000 to 2,000 in one hour, so just take note of that. So it increased from 1,000 to 2,000 in one hour. How many bacteria will be present after one and a half hours? Part B, how long will it take for the number of bacteria in the culture to become 4,000? And then that is how we are going to actually do it. So how do we solve such a number? So first of all, we've been told we're dealing with bacteria. So what we're going to do is we're going to first let the number of bacteria present be represented by P. So P is basically going to be represent the bacteria. And then we're being told that it increases at a rate proportional to the number of bacteria present. So in these kinds of numbers, the first thing for you to note that is very, very important is, is there an increase or a decrease? So if there's an increase, what happens is the K value shall be positive. If there's a decrease, the K value shall be negative. So that's going to be very, very key in all kinds of numbers in this section. But we're dealing with rate of growth, so that actually means that it's actually going to be positive. So dpdt, so we're talking about the rate of bacteria increase with respect to time. So the time is in terms of hours. So dpdt is directly proportional to increase in, in bacteria. So it's directly proportional to the number of bacteria present. So that's how, what, how we're going to have it as here. So now we're going to convert this uh, proportion sign and we're going to convert that to an equal sign and then when we do that we introduce the constant k so as you can see because we're dealing with rate of increase in population we're actually going to have a positive k actually that is because there is an increase but if there was a decrease this would have actually been negative k p 
Now, the next thing is we're now going to deal with a knowledge that we had from separable differential equations. So we're going to group those terms that actually have the same variables. So this is how we're going to do it. So the P's go together and the T is going to go where there is the K. So we have 1 over P dP shall actually be equal to K D T. So now when you have this step, this is actually the differential equation right here that we've actually derived. But now we can actually now go forward. So next we're going to introduce the integral sign. So integral of this being equal to the integral of k d t but now we're going to pull out this k out of the integral because the k is basically a constant so it can actually be pulled out so next uh, lean p shall actually be equal to k t plus c so that's what we get when you actually integrate both sides and then we're going to let this to be the equation one lean p shall actually be equal to k t plus c so now the next step is we need to first find the value of the constant c and how do we find that we actually have to look for when t was zero so that actually means at the very very beginning so when we look at this question we're saying if the number increases from 1000 to 2000 so that basically means that at t is equal to zero hours it was basically the starting point was 1000 so this is actually going to help us to find the value of the constant c so when t is equal to zero p is 1000 so wherever there is p in this equation one we're going to replace that with 1000 and then where there is t we're actually going to place a zero so k times zero we know is going to be zero so we'll be left with c being equal to lin 1000 and this shall be our equation two so now we know the value of c so the next step shall be to find the value of k but find the value of k we shall be dealing with the first properties given so we have been told that the number increases from 1,000 to 2,000 in one hour. So now we're going to be dealing with that change right there. So to increase from 1,000 to 2,000 means there was an increase of by 1,000 in one hour. So that's what we're going to do. So basically when t is equal to one hour, because time is in terms of hours, p is 2,000. So the population of bacteria became 2,000 when t became 1. So we can actually now use this, go back to the equation one, and then we're going to use that. So where there is P, we're going to put 2000, and where there is T, the time is one hour, and then plus C. So we have lean 2000 is equal to K plus C. So if we make K the subject, K should actually be equal to lean 2000 minus C. But remember that C is actually lean 1000 from equation two. So we're going to substitute that in and we'll have k being equal to lean 2000 minus lean 1000. But remember that when we are subtracting a lean from a lean, we actually divide both of them. So we'll have lean of 2000 divided by 1000. Then k shall actually be equal to lean 2. So now we know the value of k and that shall actually be our equation 3. So now that we know the value of k, we can actually now solve part A. So in part A, we are being asked how many bacteria will be present after one and a half hours all right so the next thing to do is we're going to substitute the values of k and c that we've actually found into equation one so what shall we have we'll have lean p being equal to t lean 2 plus lean 1000 and then now we can actually look at the case where t is equal to one and a half hours so that's actually a question in part a so i want to know the population of bacteria present in one and a half hours so now that we have we know what k is and you know what c is you can now substitute right there so now we have lean p is equal to one and a half lean two plus lean one thousand so now that's what we're dealing with so we can actually see that we'll have so one and a half is basically the same as three over two lean two plus one thousand and then now i know when you're dealing with lean you can actually convert this into the power of this so we'll have lean two to the power three over two plus one thousand Okay, so basically, 2 to the power 3 over 2 should actually be 2.8 uh, to the power. I mean, it should actually be 2.828427. So now the basic next thing is you know that when we add lean values, natural logarithms, it's the same as multiplying them. So we shall have lean p being equal to lean into bracket 2828.427. Now basically, by just comparing the value on the right-hand side and the value on the left, we can clearly already see that since this is lean and this is lean, it means that the P is clearly equal to this value that we have right there. So basically, what we have is P is equal to 2828.42 bacteria, and that shall be the population of bacteria present in one and a half hours. 
Alright, so the next question, part B, we're being told how long will it take for the number of bacteria in the culture to become 4,000? Alright, so now we're looking for the, how long it will take. So that means we don't know the time, but we know the number of bacteria. So we want to find the time it takes to, for P to become 4,000. So we're again going to use that equation 1. And then we're just going to substitute everything inside. Now we already know what C is, we already know what K is. So now all we need is to substitute 4,000 into the place where we have P. And then we're going to find the value of T. So now this is what we have. Lean 4,000 being equal to T lean 2 plus lean 1,000. So now we're going to actually take this to the other side and we know that when we subtract leans, this minus this, it should actually be the same as lean 4,000 over 1,000 being equal to T lean 2. Basically, this should actually give us a 4. So we have lean 4 being equal to T lean 2, of which if we make T the subject, T should actually be equal to lean 4 over lean 2, of which the answer should actually be equal to 2. So that means our time is 2 hours. So it will take 2 hours for the number of bacteria to become 4,000. Alright, so let's move on to question number 2. So the next question was a question from Uneb 2008, and this was question number 16. So I've been told that the number of car accidents in X years on the highway was found to appropriate, approximate to dx dt is equal to kx, where t is the time in years and k is a constant. At the beginning of 2000, the number of accidents was 50. If the number of accidents increased to 60 at the beginning of 2002, Estimate the number that was expected at the beginning of 2005. So this is actually a question that is well done for you already because the differential equation is already given to you. So that means you don't have to guess whether there was an increase or a decrease. But by just looking at it this way, I can actually say that basically there must have been an increase because this is positive k. So the differential equation is already given to us, so we don't have to uh, figure it out. So dx dt, x represents the number of accidents on the highway and then the time is in years should actually be equal to k x so now we can actually just separate all the variables they will do it separable differential equation so we'll have one over x dx being equal to k d t so integrating both sides we'll have the integral of one over x dx being equal to the integral of k d t so as you can see we can extract out the k from here and we'll have the integral of one d T. So now that we have that, when I look at this integral right here, this will actually give me lean x being equal to, this will actually give me t. So it's kt plus c. So this shall be my equation 1. So this is going to actually be the general equation that we should actually be dealing with in general to actually solve most of the numbers. So now the next step is we need to find a way of finding the value of c and then we shall find the value of k. Alright, so to find the value of C, we actually have to look for the time when T was 0 years, and then we need to find out what the number of accidents were. So, remember when T was 0 years, that just means at the very beginning, because we are saying at the beginning of 2000, the number of accidents was 50. So that means we are going initially. So when T was uh, 0 years, so that means at the very beginning, X was 50. So now, we are going to actually substitute both of these into equation 1. So we'll have lean 50 being equal to K. 0 plus c. As you can see, we'll have lean 50 being equal to 0 plus c. And then c shall actually be equal to lean 50. And that shall be our equation 2. So now we know the value of c. Alright, so the next thing is we're being told that if the number of accidents increased to 60 at the beginning of 2002, so that's the next statement. So now the number of accidents increased and became 60 at the beginning of 2002. So ask ourselves the question, how long was 2002 from the year 2000? So that was an increase by two years. So t, t became two years and x became 60 at that point. So when t is two years, x is 60. So when we substitute that into equation one, we'll have lean 60 being equal to k with two here plus c. So lean 60 should actually be equal to 2k plus c. And then if we make uh, 2k the subject, 2k should actually be equal to lean 60 minus c. But remember that c is lean 50, so have it as 2k being equal to lean 60 minus lean 50. And then if we subtract leans on natural logarithms, then that's the same as having 60 divided by 50, of which we'll have 6 over 5. So if I make k the subject, k should actually be equal to a half lean bracket 6 over so now we know the value of k and we know the value of c. 
All right, so next we are being asked to estimate the number that was expected at the beginning of 2005. So how far from to, how far from 2000 is 2005? So that's five years forward. So we're going to first substitute the value of k and c into equation one, and we'll have lean x being equal to a half t lean six over five. As you can see, uh, the t is still unknown, so I have it this way plus lean fifty. Now we're looking at a situation where t became 5 at the beginning, so t is 5 years at the beginning of 2005, and we don't know the number of accidents by then. So we're going to substitute this into this equation. So we have lean x being equal to a half times 5 lean 6 over 5 plus lean 50. So 5 times 1 over 2 should actually be equal to 5 over 2 lean 6 over 5 plus lean 50. Now you remember this 5 over 2 that is in front of the lean can actually be made the power. So we'll have it this way. Now 6 over 5 is 1.2 if you press it in your calc. And then we'll have it to the power 5 over 2. So this is what we have. Now remember that a lean plus a lean is the same as this times that. But before we do that, we know that when we have 1.2 to the power 5 over 2 should actually be equal to 1.577440 plus this lean 50. So now we can subtract the two values and we'll have lean x being equal to lean into bracket 1.57744 times 50, of which the answer should actually be equal to 78.872. But now you can already clearly see that this x value clearly represents this 78.872 because this is lean, this is lean, and there is no other extra value. So x is definitely 78.872. So that's what we have. But we cannot have accidents in decimal places, so we actually just have to round that off to the nearest whole number, of which it should actually be equal to 79 accidents. So therefore, the number of accidents at the beginning of the year 2005 was 79. Alright, so the next question is a question from UNEB 1998, and this was question number 16. So I've been told that a rumor spreads through, through town at a rate which is proportional to the product of the number of people who have had it and those who have not had it. Given that x is the fraction of the population of the town who have had the rumor after time t, form a differential equation connecting x, t, and a, and a cost constant k. So sorry about that, a constant k. So if initially a fraction, now pay attention, this is capital C, had had the rumor, deduce that x should actually be equal to capital C over capital C plus 1 minus capital C being equal to, I mean times, e to the power negative k t. So this is a question you need to be careful because there is actually a lot of things involved. So it's a rumor spreading through a town that at a rate which is proportional, to so remember, it's the rumor spread at a rate which is proportional to the product of the number of people who have had it and those who have not had it. So that's very, very important. And then, given that 15% had had the room at 9 a.m. and another 15% by noon, find what further fraction of the population would have had the room by 3 p.m. So that basically means we're actually looking at time also in hours. All right, so how are we going to solve this? So, if x is the fraction of the number of people who have had the room, then the fraction 1 minus x have not had the Roma. So this is basically very, very important because there is a fraction of those who have had the rumor and those who have not. And then that is very, very important. So now we know that the remaining fraction is 1 minus x. And then we've been told that the rumor spreads at the rate is proportion to the product of the number of those who have had it and those who have not had it. So that basically means that the rumor is we will have dxt being proportional to x, which is the fraction of those who have had it, times the fraction of those who have not had it, which is 1 minus x. So that's very, very important. So identifying this is now the most important thing in this section. So now we'll have the differential equation as dx dt being equal to kx into bracket 1 minus x. So this is the most important part. So when you figure this out, everything else will come out. Now, before you do that, let's first actually arrange this as a separable differential equation. Alright, so now this is what we have. If we arrange and separate all variables that are look alike and put them together, so we'll have 1 over x into 1 minus x dx being equal to kdt. So we can now integrate both sides, and this is what we'll have. And then from the right-hand side, we can actually extract the k out of the integral because the k is a constant into 1d 
t. So now the next step is when I look into the left hand side, I can actually say that to integrate this value on the left hand side, I will need to remember the knowledge of linear partial fractions. So let's deal with the left hand side. So I can go to let 1 over x into 1 minus x be equal to a over x plus b over 1 minus x. So if you've not understood this, I encourage you to actually check my video on linear partial fractions in the playlist of integration. So we'll have 1 over x into 1 minus x being equal to that because that's what we get when you actually find the LCM right here. So this is what we'll have. And then I can see that this and this cancel and I'll be left with 1 being equal to a into 1 minus x plus b x. So we can actually now state and see that if x is 1, we shall have 1 being equal to a into 1 minus 1 plus b. So we'll have b being equal to 1. So that's the value of b. So if x is 0, we'll have it this way. 1 into a into bracket 1 minus 0 plus b times 0. So we'll have a also being equal to 1. So we know the value of a and the value of b. So substitute that back in and this is what we'll have. So we'll have 1 over x into 1 minus x being equal to 1 over x plus 1 over 1 minus x. So we're going to put that back in and then we're going to now integrate it this way. So now we've actually simplified the fraction. So this is what we'll have it in terms of partial fractions. So let's integrate that. So when I integrate this, I'll have, so 1 over x will give me lin x minus, because a negative sign will come out of this. This will give me a negative lin into bracket 1 minus x. So I have lin x minus lin into bracket 1 minus x plus c. So therefore, we now have this. So now for the left-hand side, remember that this is what we've gotten. So we'll have lin x minus lin into 1 minus x. And then this side here on the right-hand side will give me kt plus c. So I'll have lean because now it's a lean minus lean. So we can actually divide both. I'll have lean into bracket x over 1 minus x being equal to kt plus c. And this shall be my equation 1. So this is what we're going to center around on through the working. All right. So we've been told that if initially a fraction c had had the rumor, deduce that x shall actually be equal to that. Alright, since we are looking at it initially, initially means at the very beginning. So that means when t was 0 hours, we're saying that the fraction that had had the rumor, so remember the fraction that had the rumor was represented by x. So we're going to assume that at the very beginning that x should actually be equal to capital C. So we're going to substitute that into this equation 1. So where there is x, we're going to put capital C. So we'll have lean into, now remember to separate that from what the C that we actually have here for a constant. So for the constant, the C is actually a small C. So that's how you should know and differentiate it from this C that actually is representing the number of those who had had the rumor at the very beginning. So now basically, if I make C the subject, because K times 0 is 0, I, I'll have C being equal to lean into bracket C over 1 minus C. All right, so therefore, substituting for c into this equation 1, I'll have this value here, right here. So now, if I make, now remember, I want to look for the value of k. So actually, if I make this side here the subject, I'll have negative kt, because this can actually be taken to the left-hand side, and then I'll actually bring this right here. So it will be this c minus this value right here. So I have negative kt being equal to lean into this minus that. But remember, when you're subtracting lean values, it's the same as dividing them. So I can change that division sign into a multiplication sign, and this is what I'll have. So I have negative kt being equal to lean into bracket c into 1 minus x over x into 1 minus c. So now the next step is, I cannot leave it like this because I actually want to find the value of x at some point because I have to make x a subject. So I'm, also, I'm going to first have to find a way of eliminating this lean value right here. So I do that by introducing e to both sides. So I have e to the into the to the power negative kt being equal to e lean that. Now the e cancels out the lean so I have e to the power negative kt being equal to c into 1 minus x over x into 1 minus c. So now remember the goal is to make x a subject. So Let's first see what we can do. So I'm going to first uh, cross multiply, and then this is what I'll have. So next, I can actually now see, I can multiply this in, and I'll have c minus cx, just like that. And then now, the next step shall be, I want to group all the values that have x together. So I'm going to take this to this other side. 
So now the next step is I can see that this x can actually be extracted out. So I can extract out the x. So I'll have x into e to the power negative kt into bracket 1 minus c plus c being equal to c. Now making x the subject, x shall actually be equal to c over c plus into bracket 1 minus c times e to the power negative k t and that is the proof that they wanted so at the initial this is what our x shall actually be when we make x be equal to c so this is what we'll get all right so we're being told in part c that given that 15 percent had had the rumor at 9 a.m and another 15 percent by noon find what further fraction of the population would have had the rumor by 3 p.m so how are we going to do that Alright, since C, capital C represents a fraction of those who had initially had the rumor, so that means at 9 a.m. when T is 0 hours, C was actually 15 over 100. So 15 over 100 is simply to represent 15%. So now we can actually make use of this equation we actually derived right here. So we'll have X being equal to 15 over 100 is 0 0.15 over 0 0.15 plus to bracket 1 minus 0 0.15 e to the power negative K T. Alright, so the value of x shall actually now be equal to 0 0.15 over 0 0.15 plus 0 0.85 e to the power negative k t. So next, we can now look at the next time at midday, 12 p.m. Now 12 p.m. is actually 3 hours away from 9 a.m. So at that moment, time 3 hours had passed. At that moment, we also know that x is actually equal to 30 over 100. So now since we don't know the value of k already by default, what we're going to do is actually going to make use of this to actually find the value of k. So now where there is x, we're actually now going to place 30 over 100 and we're going to make use of this. So this is what we're going to have. So we'll have x, so this is what we have right here. So we know that where there is uh, a k, I mean where there is t, t is actually 3, so we'll have negative 3k. And then where there is x, we're actually going to place 0 0.3, which is 30 over 100. So we're going to use that to find the value of k. So if we cross multiply, we'll have 0 0.045 plus 0 0.255e to the power negative 3k shall actually be equal to 0 0.15. So if we take this to the other side, 0 0.045, take it to the other side, we'll have subtract, it will become 0 0.105. So now next, we can actually divide both sides by 0 0.255 and this is what we'll end up having. So next, this is what we have. And then the next thing is to eliminate that e. We actually just have to introduce a lean to both sides. So we'll have lean e to the power negative 3k big equal to lean 0 0.105 over 0 0.255. And then we'll have negative 3k being equal to lean of that, of which k shall now be equal to negative a third lean into bracket 0 0.105 over 0 0.255. So now that we know the value of k, we can now easily find the what we are being required for in part c so at 3 p.m which is what we're targeting now 3 p.m is six hours away from 9 a.m what is the value of x so that's actually now what we want so now we're going to substitute everything back and then we'll have it this way so now where there is uh the t will actually place in a negative six now it's a negative because there's a negative k right there and then times a negative now this is already a negative as you can see right there so this times this will give me a positive. So I have x being equal to 0 0.15 over 0 0.15 plus 0 0.85 times e to the power 2 times. Uh, now remember this and this will give me positive 2, 2 lean of that. So now I know that when I actually uh, multiply this with lean of that, I'll actually get negative 1.7746. All right, so now... If I multiply this, if I press this in my calculator, I'll get a value that when I multiply with 0 0.85 will give me 0 0.1441. So add this to 0 0.15 and I have 0 0.294. Now this divided by that will give me an x value of 0 0.51. Of which, now because we're being told that x should be in fraction form, 0 0.51 in fraction form is 51 over 100. So therefore the fraction of 51 over 100 will have had the rumor by 3p. M, and that is the answer that they wanted. Alright, so the next question is a question from Minep 2009 and this was question number 16. So I've been told that in a certain process, the rate of production of yeast is kx grams per minute. So that means our time is in minutes. 
where x grams is the amount produced and k is equal to 0 0.003. So we've already been told the value of k, so that means we actually don't need to look for it in this question. So being told to show that the amount of yeast is doubled in about 230 minutes. Then B, we're being told that if in addition, yeast is removed at a constant rate of m grams per minute, find the amount of yeast at time t minutes, given that when t is equal to zero, x is p grams, then we're being told to find the value of M if P is 20,000 grams and the supply of yeast is exhausted in 100 minutes. So this question seems to have a lot of parts, but this is actually an easy one. So now, if we look at part A, there's actually a difference between part A and part B. Now in part A, we're being told that the amount of yeast is doubled. So that actually means that in part A, RK is positive because in part A, there is an increase. But in part B, we're being told that if in addition, yeast is removed at a constant rate. So that means in part D, we shall now actually be having a decrease. So that actually means that we're going to actually have to form another differential equation for part B that is different from that in part A. So that's the trick in this question. But let's look at what we can do. So since X is the amount of yeast produced, so this is what we have. Now we're being told that the rate of production of yeast is k grams per minute. So that means that we have the X dt is directly proportional to the amount of yeast produced so this is what we have because it's being produced and so have the x dt is directly proportional to x so introduce uh, a k and we'll have the x dt being equal to k x so now we're going to collect uh different terms that are actually like so where there are x's we're going to combine them because this is now a separable differential equation so have one over x dx being equal to k d t all right so integrating both sides i'll have integral of one over x dx being equal to the integral of k d t so now I can extract the k out of the integral because that's actually a constant. So when I integrate both sides, I'll have lean x on the left-hand side being equal to kt plus c. And this shall actually be my equation 1. All right, so next I need to find the value of c. And I can only find the value of c by considering the moment where t is 0 minutes. All right, so I do not know exactly the amount of yeast produced at 0 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x not be the initial production. So x0 is going to be representing the amount of yeast produced when t is 0. So when t is 0 minutes, x shall actually be equal to x0. So lean x0, if I substitute this here into the equation 1, I'll have lean x0 being equal to k. Because t is 0, I'll have it as 0k plus c, which I'll have a 0. 0 times k is 0. So I'll have c being equal to lean x0, and that shall actually be my equation 2. Now, substituting for c into equation 1, I will have lean x being equal to kt plus lean x naught. So now this becomes my equation here because now I know the value of c. Now, the next step shall be to look at the next level. All right, so the, in the next step, I would have actually been finding the value of k, but I already now know the value of k is 0 0.003, so I don't need to look for it. So I've been told to show that the amount of yeast is doubled in about 230 minutes. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. So given k is 0 0.003 and t is 230 minutes, this is what I'll end up having. So now we're looking at the point where uh, we have 230 minutes that have passed. So we need to find the value of x in 230 minutes. So now I'm going to substitute everything back into this equation right here. So I have lean x being equal to that because k is now 0 0.003 times 230 plus this lean x naught. So lean x should actually be equal to 0 0.69 plus lean x naught. So now I can actually bring this lean x naught to the other side and have lean x minus lean x naught being equal to 0 0.69. Then we know that when we subtract lean values, it's the same as dividing them. So I have lean x over x naught being equal to 0 0.69. Now I need to eliminate that lean, but I'll do that by introducing e to both sides. So this is what I'll end up having. So e lean that and then being equal to e 0 0.69. Nine. Now you need to press this in your calculator. So when you press this in your calculator, you get a value which is 1.998 uh, something, which is actually approximately equal to 2. And then here, the E will cancel out the lean and I'll have x over x naught. So cross multiply and I'll have x being equal to 2x naught. 
So this proves to me that the amount of yeast is really doubled every 230 minutes because now you can see that compared to the initial production of yeast which is X0, if I multiply it by 2 it means it has actually doubled in 230 minutes and thus I have proved what part A was asking for. Hence the amount of yeast is doubled in 230 minutes. Alright, so in part B we're being told that if in addition yeast is removed at a constant rate of m grams per minute, find the amount of yeast at time t minutes given that when t is 0, x is p grams. So we're being told that the amount of yeast is being removed at a constant rate of m grams per minute. So what does that mean? Alright, so if x grams is amount produced per minute and m grams is removed per minute, then the remaining yeast should actually be equal to x minus m. So that's going to be the important part in this section. And that is because we want to look at the remaining yeast. So now we'll have another differential equation, which is dx dt being proportional to x minus m. So I can now introduce a k and I'll have dx dt being equal to k into bracket x minus m. So if I can actually arrange them, I'll have 1 over x minus m dx being equal to k d t. So integrating both sides, this is what I end up having. So I'll have lean x minus m being equal to k t plus c. And this shall be my equation 1. So let's look at the initial beginning. So I've been told when t is 0 minutes, x is actually p grams. So we're going to use that to find the value of c. So I have lean p minus m being equal to k 0 plus c, of which c shall actually now be equal to lean p minus m. And this shall be my equation 2. So I'm going to substitute for c into equation 1, and what I'll have is this. So now if I actually now combine this term and this term, I'll have lean x minus m minus lean p minus m shall actually be equal to k t. So, but remember when I subtract uh, lean values, I'll have them the same as divide, dividing them. So I have x minus m over p minus m being equal to k t. And now to eliminate this lean, I'll actually now to introduce an e. So introducing e to both sides, this is what I end up having. So I'll have x minus m over p minus m shall actually now be equal to e k t. And then if I cross multiply, I'll have x minus m is equal to p minus m times e k t. Now, I remember that the value of k is 0 0.003, so I'm actually going to substitute that in. I'll now have x minus m being equal to p minus m times e to the power 0 0.003 t. So now making x the subject, x, shall, x which is the amount of yeast produced, we shall have x being equal to m plus into bracket p minus m times e to the power 0 0.0003 t. So this actually is now the equation for what we'll have as the value of x at that point. So therefore, the amount of yeast produced at time t minus x shall actually now be equal to m plus to bracket p minus m e to the power 0 0.003 t. So in part 2, we're being told to find the value of m if p is 20,000 grams and the supply of yeast is exhausted in 100 minutes. Alright, so for part b, we're actually now going to be looking at when p is 20,000 and t is 100 minutes. So we're going to be making use of this equation right there. So when supply of yeast is exhausted, x is 0. So that's basically what it means by the word exhausted. It means that x becomes 0. So substitute that in and this is what I'll have. So I have 0 being equal to that. So now this is, how, is what I have. Now I know at 0 0.003 times 100 is 0 0.3 and then Next, I can actually now open these brackets and multiply in the E0.3. So that's why I have it this way. So now I'm going to collect like terms. I'm going to bring the values of that have M in them together. And then I'm going to take to the other side. Now, if I take this to the other side, this becomes a negative and this becomes a positive. That's why I have M E0.3 minus M being equal to that so now i can factorize out the m and then it will be m into brackets is 0 0.3 minus 1 so making m the subject this is what i have so now find the value of m m should actually be equal to 26,997.17615 divided by 0 0.35 of which m should actually now be equal to 77,165.92 grams and therefore that shall be the value of m when the amount of yeast is exhausted in a hundred minutes. 
All right, so moving on, we look at rates of decay or rate of population decrease. But I think I mentioned something earlier, which will give you a hint to what happens in this case. So basically, it means that we actually now have a negative K. So now, we're looking at a question from Ineb 2014, and this was question number 16. So being told that a substance loses mass at a rate proportion to the amount M present at time T. So being told to form a differential equation connecting M t and the constant of proportionality k so if initially the mass of the substance is m naught show that m is equal to m naught e negative k t and then part c given that half of the substance is lost in 1600 years determine the number of years 15 grams of the substance we take to reduce to 13.6 grams all right so now let's look at the solution so now basically we can see that now we have dm over dt is proportional to m. So now when you introduce the k, we'll have dm dt is equal to negative k m. Now remember that a decay is a reduction in mass. So that means we have a negative k m. And then now if we separate all the variables and then combine those that are similar, we'll have one of m dm being equal to negative k dt. And then this is actually going to be our differential equation. So that actually solves part one. Now part B of being told if initially the mass of the substance is M0, show that M is equal to that. Now for that, let's first actually continue solving this. So we're going to first integrate both sides. So we're going to introduce the integral and we'll have this. Now bring out the negative K and we'll have negative K into the integral of 1 dt. Then we integrate that we'll have lean M being equal to negative KT plus C and that shall be our equation 1. Then the question in part B, we're being told that if initially the mass of the substance is M0, so that means the, at the very beginning when T is 0, show that M, which represents the mass present at a certain time, is going to be equal to M0 e to the power negative k T. So this is a proof question. So now we're going to look at the time when T is 0 here. So at the very beginning when it's initial, it means M shall actually be equal to M0. So if you substitute all those back into this equation 1, we'll have lean M0 being equal to k times 0 plus C k times 0 is going to give us a 0, of which c shall now be equal to lean m naught. So substitute for c into equation 1 and we'll have lean m being equal to negative kt plus lean m naught. And this is what we'll have. Now basically we're being asked to prove something. So now we're going to rearrange this. So we'll have lean m minus lean m naught being equal to negative kt, of which this is the same as dividing them. So we'll have it as m over m naught being equal to negative kt. Alright, so moving on, the next step is to eliminate this lean, and we're going to do that by introducing E to both sides. So we're going to do that next. So introducing E to both sides, this is what we'll have. Now this E will cancel out this lean, and we'll have M over M not being equal to E to the power negative K T. And then if I make M the subject, M shall actually be equal to M not times E to the power negative K T. And that is the proof that they wanted. So in part C, we're being told that given that half of the substance is lost in 1,600 years, determine the number of years 15 grams of the substance would take to reduce to 13.6 grams. So therefore, when T is 1,600 years, we now know that half of the substance was lost. Now remember that the initial mass of the substance, we represent it with M0. So half of the initial is actually M0 over 2. So in 1,600 years, we have M being equal to M0 over 2. So now substituting this into this equation that we actually have here, we'll have, so whether it's T, we'll put 1,600, and this is what we'll have. And whether it's M, we have M0 over 2. So we cross multiply and we have M0 being equal to M0 e to the power negative uh, 1,600. Okay, now you can see the M0 values cancel, and we'll have 1 being equal to 2 e to the power negative 1,600. Okay. And then if we divide 2 on both sides, we'll have e to the power negative 1600k should actually be equal to a half. Now I need to eliminate that e and then I'll have that e going. So I do that by introducing lean to both sides. So I'll have lean that being equal to lean a half. So I'll have negative 1600k because this lean shall eliminate this e. So I'll be left with negative 1600k being equal to lean a half. And then if I make k the subject, k should actually now be equal to negative 1000 1 over 1600 lean a half. So now that I know the value of k, I can now look at the next situation. So we need to know the amount of years that pass for us to be left with 13.6 
grams. So we've already noted that the initial mass was 15 grams. We, so M0 is 15 grams. And then we need to know when the mass will become 13.6 grams. So we need to find how many years would have passed. So we're going to be making use of our equation that we had actually derived. So therefore, now we're going to substitute in the value. So this is what we'll have. The good thing is now we know the value of K. They're going to substitute it there. So this is what we'll have. Now a negative and a negative will actually cancel and will have a positive. So half 13.6 being equal to 15e to the power 1600 lean a half t. Alright, so next dividing both sides by 15, I'll have e to the power 1 over 1600 lean a half t shall actually be equal to 13.6 over 15. So the next step is I want to eliminate that e and I'll do that by introducing lean to both sides. So I'll have this and that. So this lean will eliminate the e and I'll be left with 1 over 1600 lean a half t being equal to lean 13.6 over 15 and now to make t the subject i'll actually have 1 of 1600 lean so when i cross multiply i'll actually have it this so it will become so this this will multiply that 1600 will multiply this and then i'll divide everything else by lean a half and then i'll have t being equal to 226.17 years and that is what they wanted. Right, so moving on to the next question. So being told that the rate of decay of the radioactive material is proportional to the mass m grams of the material present at any time t. Then I've been told that initially there was 200 grams of the material. Then after 20 minutes the material had reduced to 50 grams. So part A form a differential equation for the chemical reaction. Part B. By solving the differential equation formed in A, determine the amount of the material present after 5 minutes. And then, part 2. Time taken for the amount of the material to be reduced to 10 grams. So now, the time is in terms of minutes, and then the mass of the material is in terms of grams. So now, we're going to let M be the mass of the radioactive material at any time T. But it was anyway given in the question. And then, so therefore we have dm dt is proportional to m. But now since we're dealing with it reducing in size, we're actually going to have a negative k. So we have dm dt being equal to negative k m. So now this is what we have as the differential equation that we're being asked for. So next step in part b, part 1, we're going to first integrate this on both sides. But before we do that, we're actually going to collect like terms. So we'll have... 1 over m dm being equal to negative k dt and then we're going to reduce the integral so have integral of 1 over m dm being equal to negative k into the integral of 1 dt so we we'll have lean m being equal to negative kt plus c so in the question we we're told that initially there was 200 grams of the material so now that is a very, very important part. So that means when t was 0 minutes, the grams were 200. So that's going to help us find c so now when t was 0 minutes, m was 200 grams. So when we substitute for that into the equation 1, we'll have lean 200 being equal to negative k into bracket 0 plus c. So we'll have lean 200 is equal to 0 plus c and c shall be equal to lean 200. So next we're being told that after 20 minutes, the material had reduced to 50 grams. So we've been told that when t is 20 minutes, m is 50 grams. So this shall help us find the value of k. So we're going to substitute for this also in two equation one. But now we know what the value of c is. So it's actually going to simplify everything. So whether you see, we're going to place lean 200. So we have lean 50 is equal to negative 20k plus lean 200. So now take this lean 200 to that side and we'll have lean 50 minus lean 200 being equal to negative 20 k but not when we subtract a lean and a lean we'll have it as division so have lean 50 over 200 which is the same as that so now make k the subject here and we'll have being it being equal to negative 1 over 20 lean into bracket 50 over 200 so now we know the value of k and then we can reduce this further this shall become 1 over 4 and that's what we're going to have as our equation 2 so we know the value of k now so in B part 1, we're being told to find the amount of the material present after 5 minutes. So that means that when t is 5 minutes, we need to know the value of m. So now we're going to substitute for that into equation 1, knowing what the value of c is and what the value of k is. And we need to find the value of m. So t is 5, so that's why we have it as negative 5. It's because of this negative 
that is right here so we have negative 5 but this is also a negative so these negatives will cancel and then we know that this and this will reduce and we'll be left with a quarter lean a quarter plus lean 200 but now you can actually make this a quarter the power of this so we'll have a quarter to the power a quarter but before we do that a quarter is 0 0.25 so we'll have 0 0.25 to the power a quarter now next we know that when you have lean plus lean it's the same as having this times that so lean m should actually be equal to this now lean a quarter lean so i'm actually 0 0.25 to the power a quarter is 0 0.707 one so multiply those two terms and we'll have it this way and we'll have 141.42 one so you can already even see from both sides that since this is lean and this is lean that m clearly represents 141.42 one. So M is 141.421 grams. So therefore, the amount of the material present after 5 minutes is 141.421 grams. So in part B, part 2, we're being told to find the time taken for the amount of the material to be reduced to 10 grams. So part B, part 2. So we need to find the time taken for M to be 10 grams. So we're also going to substitute for this into equation 1, but we know what K is and we know what c is so substitute that in now it is t that we do not know and then we now know that m is 10 so substitute that back in all right so basically this is what i now have so this negative and this negative will cancel and i'll be left with this and then next i can actually take this lean 200 to the other side and i'll have lean 10 minus lean 200 but you know what when a lean subtracts a lean it's the same as division so it will be like 10 over 200 so this is what we'll have and then I can actually now cross multiply. This 20 will go here and I'll have 20 lean, 10 over 200. Now I'll have to make T the subject and T shall actually now be equal to 20 lean, 1 over 20 over lean a quarter. Of which T shall now be equal to 43.22 minutes. And that is the time that they were looking for. So that is the time it takes for the mass to become 10 grams. Alright, so moving to the next question. The next question will be told that in a certain game reserve, there are 80 elephants. Being told that poachers start killing the elephants at a rate which is directly proportional to the number of elephants remaining in the forest. So it's being told that after one month, 40 elephants have been killed. Then we're told that let X be the number of elephants killed after T months. In part, we're being told to show that lean 80 over 80 minus X shark will be equal to, lean, to T lean. Two. And then B, we're being told to capture the number of elephants killed after two months. Part 2, time taken to kill 75 elephants. And in this case, state the average number of elephants killed per day. So this is a tricky question. It's tricky because someone may easily confuse this value of X to what they said at the beginning. So take note, you have been told that there are 80 elephants. Then we've been told that poachers start killing the elephants at a rate. So observe what the rate is, which is directly proportional to the number of elephants remaining in the forest so what happens is it is at the rate of that of elephants remaining in the forest then we know that after one month 40 elephants have been killed then let x be the number of elephants killed after t months so x represents uh the number of elephants killed after t months so this is number of elephants killed but we need something to represent the number of elephants remaining in the forest so now basically since we know that there are 80 elephants initially what that simply means is number of elephants remaining in the forest which is what we are looking for which is the one that is proportional shall be 80 minus this x which represents the number of elephants killed so now we'll have dx it is proportional to 80 minus x because poachers start killing the elephants at a rate which is directly proportional to the number of elephants remaining in the forest not number of elephants killed but number of elephants remaining in the forest which is 80 minus x now as you can see because to get the number of elephants remaining we have 80 minus the number of those that have been killed so now because the number of elephants are reducing we'll have the xt being equal to negative k because there is actually a reduction times 80 minus x all right, so next we're actually going to first collect terms that have x together and those that don't to the other side. So we'll have 1 over 8 minus x dx being equal to negative k dt. Then we can now introduce integrals and we'll have integral of 1 over 8 minus x dx being equal to integral of negative k dt. 
the next we'll now have as the our answers will have negative eight minus x being equal to negative kt plus c so be careful as you're integrating because you actually get negative lean eight minus x on the left hand side so now i can actually bring this negative to the top and then i'll have eight minus x to the power negative one which is the same as lean one over eight minus x being equal to negative kt plus c and this shall be my equation one all right, so next our goal is to find the value of c and we can only do that when we actually look at the initial point of view that means when t is zero months so we're being told that the game reserve there were 80 elephants so that means 80 elephants at the very beginning so when t was zero there were 80 elephants so that basically means that no elephants were killed so that means that x which is the number of elephants killed was actually zero at the very beginning so now at the very beginning, whereas t was zero months, it means no elephants were killed yet. So that means x was still zero. So now basically what we'll have is one over eight minus zero being equal to negative k times zero plus c. Now this will be I'll be left with one over eight and this shall actually be a zero. So c shall actually be equal to lean one over eighty. So the next step is to find the value of k. So I look at the next condition. So we're being told the next that after one month. 40 elephants have been killed so that's another important one so when t is one month x is 40 elephants because x represents number of elephants killed so 40 elephants were killed after one month so plug that in into this equation one and we'll have lean one over eight minus 40 being equal to negative k times one plus lean one over eight because c is now this so one over 80 minus 40 is 40 so I have 1 over 40 being equal to negative k plus lean 180 now bring this to the other side and we'll have lean 1 over 40 minus lean 1 over 80 being equal to negative k now when we are subtracting lean values it's the same as division so I have this divide by that of which I can change that to a multiplication sign and I'll have 1 over 40 times 80 over 1 of which when I reduce I'll be left with lean 2 so, so now to find the value of k I shall take the negative to the other side and I'll have k being equal to negative lean 2. So now I know the value of k and I know the value of c. So now I'm going to substitute for both c and k into equation 1 and this is what I end up having. So now I have lean 1 over 8 minus x shall be equal to negative t into negative lean 2 because this is now the value of k plus lean 1 over 80. So now I'll have lean 1 over 8 minus x being equal to t lean 2 plus lean 180. Now I can take this to the other side and then I'll have lean 1 over 80 minus x minus lean 1 over 80 shall be equal to that. So now this is the same as this being divided and I have 1 over 80 minus x divided by 1 over 80 and then change that to multiplication sign. And so now I have lean 80 over 80 minus x shall be equal to t lean 2 and this is actually the proof that they wanted. Alright, so in part B, we're being told to calculate the number of elephants killed after two months. So that is part one. Alright, so B part one, when T is two months, number of elephants killed X is unknown. So we're going to use this equation that we actually have here. So where there is T, we're going to put two. So this is now what we'll have. So now I can see that I can actually make this two a power of this two right here. So I have lean two squared, which is four. So now I have this being equal to lean 4. And then now to eliminate the leans, I can actually introduce it to both sides. And then this is what I will have right now. So now the is will cancel out the lean values and I'll be left with 80 over 80 minus x being equal to 4. So next I can cross multiply and I'll have 80 minus x shall be equal to 80 divided by 4. So this 4 shall be divided on both sides and then this 80 shall go the other side. Of which x shall now be equal to 80 minus 80 over 4 which is like 8 over 4 is 20 so 80 minus 20 is 60 so i'll have x being equal to 60 elephants killed in two months so therefore 60 elephants were killed after two months so in b part 2 we're being told to find the time taken to kill 75 elephants and in this case state the average number of elephants killed per day so b part 2 we being told to find the number of months when number of elephants killed x is 75. So we're going to make use of our equation again. So now where there is x, we're going to put 75. So 80 minus 75 shall be 5. So we have 80 divided by 5, t lean 2. Now 80 divided by 5 is 16. So we have lean 16 being equal to t lean 
2. So making to the subject t shall be equal to lin 16 over lin 2, which is the same as 4 months. So t shall be equal to 4, which is 4 months. So therefore, 75 elephants were killed after 4 months. So now we need to know the number of elephants killed per day. So 4 months are approximately 120 days. So therefore, to calculate average number of elephants killed per day, we'll have average being equal to 75 over 120 because 75 were the, were the number killed after those 4 months. So we'll have average being equal to 6, 0 0.625 elephants killed per day and that is the answer. Alright, so question number four. Being told that a research to investigate the effect of a certain chemical on virus infection of crops revealed that the rate at which the virus population is destroyed is directly proportional to the population at that time. And be told that initially the population was P0 and two months later it was found to be P. So part A, form a differential equation connecting P and T. Then given the virus population reduced to one third of the initial population in four months, Find part A, how long it would take for only 5% of the original population to remain. Then part B, what percentage of the original virus population will be left after two and a half months. So now very important here is time is in months and then we have the virus population. So now the first thing is we're going to actually find the differential equation. So now we can say dp dt is directly proportional to and now since the virus population is being destroyed, we can now see that we'll have the PDT being equal to negative KP because there's actually a reduction in their population. And this is now our differential equation connecting P and T. So basically, when we actually collect uh, light terms, we'll have 1 over PDP being equal to negative KDT. So integrating this, we'll have lin p being equal to negative kt plus c and this shall be our equation one so in the question we are being told that initially the population was p naught so that's the initial population p naught and that's what we're going to look at next so we're being told that when t is zero months p is p naught so this will actually enable us to find the value of c so lin p naught shall be equal to negative k times zero plus c when we substitute it right into equation one. So we'll have lin p naught being equal to 0 plus c, of which c shall be equal to lin p naught, and this shall now be our equation 2. Now we're going to substitute for c into equation 1, and then we'll have lin p being equal to negative kt plus lin p naught. So next, we've been told that given the virus population reduced to one third of the initial population in four months, so that means we have the population reducing to a third in four months. So when t is 4 months, p is p naught over 3 because now we p naught is the initial population. So the, the initial population, a third of it, is now going to be the current population. So now lin p naught over 3 shall be equal to negative 4k plus lin p naught. Now that shall enable us to find the value of k. So now take this to this other side and we'll have lin p naught over 3 minus lin p not. So this is the same as them dividing and then I can change this to a multiplication sign and it will become P naught over 3 times 1 over P naught of which this and this shall cancel and be, I'll be left with lean a third of which now if I make K the subject here shall be equal to negative a quarter lean a third. Now I know what the value of K is and this shall be equation 3. So next we want to know how long it would take for only 5% of the original population to remain. So that's part B. So we need to know the time when P shall be equal to 5% of the original population. Now that is 5% is now going to be equal to 5 over 100 P naught. So that's what we actually want to find now. So we're going to substitute that into this equation here and we'll have lean 5 P naught over 100 being equal to negative a quarter because we now know what uh, that K is negative a quarter lean a third. So we're going to have that where there is K. But remember there is already a negative right there. So we need to know the value of t at that point plus lin p naught. So this is what we'll have. So the negatives will cancel and this is what I will be left with. So next I can take this to the other side and I'll have lin 5p naught over 100 minus lin p naught being equal to a quarter lin a third t. Of which now I'll have it. Now this is the same as this divided by that. Of which now I can change that to a multiplication sign and I'll have 1 over p naught. So this and this cancel and I'll be left with 
lean 5 over 100 being equal to a quarter lean a third t now i need to make t the subject and then that will be the next step so this four shall go to the other side and i have four lean five over hundred so making t the subject t shall be equal to four lean five over hundred over lean a third and then if i press this in my calc i'll have negative 11.983 over negative 1.0986 of which t shall now be equal to 10.907 months. So therefore, it will take 10.907 months for only 5% of the original population to remain. All right, so B part 2, we're being told what percentage of the original population of the original virus population will be left after two and a half months. So we need to find that. So that's B part 2. Now, we're dealing with t in two and a half months, which is the same as 2.5. And then since we want the exact percentage, I have it as x over 100p naught. So x is the percentage we're going to be looking for. So now I need to substitute this into equation 1. So I have lean xp naught over 100 being equal to negative. Now the time is 2.5. And then into bracket, k is negative a quarter lean a third plus lean p naught. So now I can now see that the negatives will cancel and I'll be left with 5 over 8 lean a third. Because 2.5 times a quarter is... 5 over 8 plus lean p naught. So the next step is I can take this to the other side and I'll have this. So now when I subtract leans, it's the same as division. So change that division to a multiplication and I have x p naught over 100 times 1 over p naught. So the p naught values cancel and I'll be left with lean x over 100 being equal to 5 over 8 lean a third. So now I can now see that this 5 over 8 can be made a power of a third. So this is what I'll have. So next, I'm going to introduce e to both sides to eliminate the lean, and then I'll have e lean x over 100 being equal to e lean a third to the power 5 over 8. So now the lean is going to have x over 100 being equal to a third to the power 5 over 8. So now this will give me 0 0.5033, and then if I cross multiply, I'll have x being equal to 50.33%. So therefore, 50.33% of the original virus population will be left after two and a half months. All right, so next we look at rate of cooling. So let's look at a question. So this question is saying, a beaker containing water at 100 degrees Celsius or centigrade is placed in a room which has constant temperature of 20 degrees centigrade. Then the rate of cooling at any moment is proportional to the difference between the temperature of the room and the liquid. So pay attention to that. So the rate of cooling at any moment is proportional to the difference between the temperature of the room and the liquid. So if after 5 minutes the temperature of the water is 60 degrees centigrade, what will, be, what will, it, what will it be after 10 minutes? So this is an easy one. So don't let theta be the temperature of the water at any time, t. So now we're being told that the rate of cooling at any moment is proportional to the difference between the temperature of the room and the liquid. So we're going to have the temperature of the liquid, which is theta minus 20, because the temperature of the room is 20. So we have it being proportional to theta minus 20. So therefore, we have d, d theta dt being equal to negative k into theta minus 20. Now, it's a negative because the water in the beaker is cooling or because there is actually reduction in temperature so now basically the next step is we're going to actually collect terms so whether it's theta we're actually going to combine all those terms that have that variable so we have 1 over theta minus 20 being equal to d i mean d theta being equal to negative k dt so now all terms are actually separated they always separate differential equations that are separable so now integrating both sides we'll have integral of 1 over theta minus 20 d theta being equal to integral of negative k dt. So now I can actually factorize out negative k and uh, this is what I'll have. So now when I integrate, I'll actually have lean theta minus 20 being equal to negative kt plus c. So now the next step is I want to find the value of c. But that means I have to consider the case where t was 5 minutes initially. So initially I can actually see that the beaker, the water in the beaker was initially 100 degrees centigrade. So that's what's going to help me to find the value of c. So now to find the value of constant c, I'll consider that when time was 0 minutes and where theta was 100 degrees centigrade initially. So now I can substitute that back in into the equation 1. So I'll have 100 minus 20 being equal to negative k times 0 plus 
c. So I have lin a to be equal to 0 plus c, of which c is lin a to. So now I know the value of constant c. So now the next step is I need to find the value of c. So the next step is I need to find the value of k. So that means I consider the next condition. So next I've been told that if after 5 minutes the temperature of the water is 60 degrees centigrade. So that will help us find the value of k. So when t is 5 minutes, theta is 60 degrees centigrade. So we'll have this. So substitute these also into equation 1 and we'll have lean 60 minus 20 being equal to negative 5k plus lean 80. Which now we know that the value of c is lean 80. And then where there is... A k here, I mean where there is a t here, we're going to put negative 5. So now 60 minus 20 is 40. So we're going to take this to the other side and we'll have lean 40 minus lean 80 being equal to negative 5. k of which subtracting lean and lean is the same as dividing them. So we'll have 40 over 8. And then we're going to divide negative 5 over on both sides and we'll have k being equal to negative 1 over 5 lean 40 over 80. Of which this is the same as k being equal to negative 1 over 5 lean a half and that shall be our equation two so now that we know the value of k and the value of c now we can actually consider the next condition in the question so now i'm being asked what will it be what will be the temperature of the water after 10 minutes so now when t is 10 minutes we need to find the value of theta which is the temperature of the water so we're going to substitute all this back into equation one where we now know the value of c and we know the value of k so substitute everything back and this is what we'll have so next where there is t you're going to put 10 and that's what we'll have there right there so there's a negative here and this negative and they'll combine together and we'll have a positive now this 10 times 1 over 5 will give us 2 so we'll have 2 lean a half plus lean 80 so now next we can actually see that this can be made a power of a half and then we'll have 0 0.5 to the power squared because a half is 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 squared is equal to 0 0.25 so now when we have a lean adding a lean it's the same as the product so we have this 0 0.25 times 80 of which we shall have it being equal to 20 so now that is the next step so now i can set it is lean theta minus 20 being equal to lean 20 so i can now see that this variable here is exactly equal to 20 because this is lean and this is then so theta minus 20 is equal to 20 of which if i make theta the subject theta shall be equal to 20 plus 20 which is 40 degrees so therefore the temperature of the water after 10 minutes will be 40 degrees centigrade all right so the next question is a question from minep 2012 and this was question number 16. so being told that at 3 pm the temperature of the hot metal was 80 degrees centigrade and that of the surrounding 20 degrees centigrade then at 3 p.m. the temperature of the metal had dropped to 42 degrees centigrade. So write a differential to represent the rate of cooling of the metal. Then part B solve the differential equation using the given condition. So part C find the temperature of the metal at 3.05 p.m. So that's what we are actually looking at. So now we can actually see that the temperature of the surrounding was 20 degrees centigrade. So what happens is in this case we actually have to subtract off the temperature of the surrounding in this case. So first of all we're going to let theta be the temperature of the metal at any time t. So we're going to subtract off the effect of the surrounding. So we're going to have d theta dt being being proportional to. So we're going to have theta minus 20. So we're going to subtract off the temperature of the surrounding from the temperature of the metal. So now we have dt, dt I mean we're going to have d theta dt being equal to negative k into bracket theta minus 20. So now since this is separable, you can now have 1 over theta minus 20 d theta being equal to negative k dt. So now we have the differential equation. That is part A. So now part B, we are being asked to solve that differential equation. So we're going to integrate both sides and this is what we'll have. So integrating both sides, we'll have lean theta minus 20 being equal to negative kt plus c and this shall be our equation 1. <coughs> So the next step is for us to find the value of c and we do that by finding out what the values are were initially so being told that at 3 pm which is the very beginning that means when we it was still zero minutes at the very beginning the temperature of the hot metal was 80 degrees centigrade so that means when t is zero minutes theta is 80 degrees centigrade so that means we'll have this so we're going to substitute all these values back here and we'll have lean 80 minus 20 being equal to negative k then we'll have 
t is 0, so 0 min times negative k is 0, and e to minus 20 is 60. So we'll have c being equal to lin 60. So now that we know this, we now need to see the next condition to help us find the value of k. So I've been told that at 3.03 p.m., and that is clearly 3 minutes after 3 p.m., the temperature of the metal had dropped 42 degrees centigrade. So that means we're looking at the point where time was now 3 minutes. All right, so when t is 3 minutes, theta is 42 degrees centigrade. So we're going to substitute all these terms and put them into equation 1. So we'll have where there is, 40, where is theta, it's 42 now. So 42 minus 20. So where there is t, we're going to have 3. So it's negative 3k plus lean 60. Because now the constant c is lean 60. So 42 minus 20 is going to give us 22. So we're going to take this to the other side and then we'll have lean 22, which is what to get from here, minus this lean 60 being equal to negative 3k. So when we have a lean subtracting a lean, it's the same as division. So we have lean 22 over 60 being equal to negative 3k. So making k the subject, k shall be equal to negative a third, lean 22 over 60. And that shall be our equation 2. 20 over 60 shall reduce and we'll have 11 over 30, dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 2. So now we know the value of k and we can use that to solve the next question. So I've been told to find the temperature of the metal at 3.05 p.m. So that is clearly 5 minutes after the beginning. So for part c, when t is 5 minutes, we need to find the temperature. So we're going to plug in everything back into equation 1. But now basically we know the value of k and we know the value of c. So this is what we end up having now. So now we have it this way. So this and this, the negatives will cancel. And then we have 5 times a third, which is 5 over 3 lean 11 over 30 plus that. Now we can take this 5 over 3 and make it a power of 11 over 30. Now 11 over 30 is 0 0.367. Now to the power 5 over 3. So now next, we can see that this will actually become 0 0.188. This is what we get for 0 0.367 to the power 5 over 3 plus lean 60. Now when you have a lean adding a lean, it's the same as them multiplying. So we have this value here multiplying the 60, which will give us 11.27. Now we can clearly see that this is lean and this is lean. And clearly this value here is now equal to 11.27. So we have theta minus 20 being equal to that. Now theta minus 20 shall be equal to 11.27, which, which if we make theta the subject, theta shall, shall be equal to 31.27 degrees centigrade. And therefore the temperature of the metal at 3.05 p.m. will be 31.27 degrees centigrade. All right, so moving on to the next question. So in the next question, number three, we're being told that a police patrol found a dead body of a man lying on a road at exactly 6 a.m. And its body temperature was 30 degrees centigrade. Ten minutes later, the police surgeon measured the body temperature and found it to be 28.5 degrees centigrade. Then we be told that if the normal body temperature 37 is 37 degrees centigrade, estimate the time at which the man died, given that the temperature of the surrounding air is 25 degrees centigrade. So there is a lot involved in this question, which needs us to be careful and take it one step at a time. So now, first of all, we've seen that the temperature of the surrounding air is 25 degrees centigrade. So we're going to have to subtract that off from the initial temperature of the body at the very beginning. So first of all, we're going to let theta be the temperature of the body at any time t. So that's going to be the beginning part. So now we're going to subtract off the temperature of the surrounding air so that we focus on the temperature of the body. So we'll have theta minus 25 degrees. So we're going to subtract off the effects of the temperature of the surrounding air. So now we'll have it this way. So we're going to introduce a k, but because the temperature of the body was actually going down, it was reducing, we're going to have a negative k to represent a decrease in body temperature. So now if we see that this, we can say that this is actually a separable differential equation. So we're going to separate it and then all the theta values will go together and we'll have 1 over theta minus 25 d theta being equal to negative k dt. So next we're going to integrate both sides and this is what we'll have introducing the integral. So next the answer we'll get is lean theta minus 25 being equal to negative kt plus c and this shall be our equation 1. So now the next step is 
to find the value of C. So that means we're going to look at what happened initially. So being told that a police patrol found the dead body of the man lying at exactly 6 a.m. So this is the beginning and its body temperature was 30 degrees. So that means when T was zero, before any hour passed, the temperature was 30 degrees. So when T is zero minutes, theta is 30 degrees centigrade. So we're going to use that to find the value of C. So put that into equation one and we'll have this. So 30 minus 25 shall be 5, of which we'll have lean 5 being equal to 0 plus C, because negative K times 0 is 0. Then C shall be equal to lean 5. So next, to find the value of K, we're going to have to look at the next condition. So I've been told that 10 minutes later, the police surgeon measured the body temperature and found it to be 28.5 degrees centigrade. So therefore, when T was 10 minutes, theta was 28.5 degrees centigrade. So we're going to substitute all that also into equation 1 and we'll have 28.5 minus 25 being equal to negative 10k plus lean 5 because now we know that C is lean 5. So now we'll have lean 3.5 minus lean 5 because we're going to take this to the other side and we'll have minus lean 5 being equal to negative 10k. So now this divide minus that is the same as lean 3.5 over 5. And then we're going to divide both sides by negative 10 to make k the subject and k shall be equal to negative 1 over 10 lean 3.5 over 5 of which this is the same as 7 over 10 if you press it in your calculator. So have k being equal to negative 1 over 10 lean 7 over 10 and that shall be our equation 2. So now that we know the value of k and c we can now use that to solve the next part. So I've been told that if the normal body temperature is 37 degrees centigrade Estimate the time at which the man died, given that the temperature of the surrounding air is 25 degrees centigrade. So this is the normal body temperature. Alright, so since the normal body temperature is 37 degrees centigrade, we can now calculate how much time the man had been dead. So we can now see how many minutes had passed since the man died. So when T is that unknown minutes, theta was 37 degrees centigrade. So we're going to just substitute that into equation 1. Because we now know the value of k and we know the value of c. So we're going to substitute everything back into equation 1. So this is now what we have. So now I can see that this negative will affect this negative and I'll have 1 over 10 t lean 7 over 10. Because this still will multiply the values inside. So now the next thing I can see is I can actually take this lean 5 to the other side. So I'll have lean 12 minus lean 5. Of which if a lean is subtracting another lean it's the same as that divide by that. So I have lean 12 over 5 being equal to 1 over 10 t lean 7 over 10. So next I can see that if I make t the subject, t shall be equal to 10 lean 12 over 5 over lean 7 over 10. And I'll get t as being equal to negative 24.545 minutes, which is approximately negative 25 minutes. So now I need to calculate at what time the man had actually died. So to estimate the time at which the man died, I know that he was found by the police or the surgeon at 6 a.m. So now I can just subtract off the 25 minutes that I've actually found right here. And I will see that it will be 5.35 a.m. So therefore the man died at around 5.35 a.m. And that is the answer that they wanted. Alright, so I have an exercise for you, and it's an exercise comprising of six numbers. So this is question one and question two. You can actually pause the video and copy the questions. And then what I encourage you to do is just look at the answers here in brown. You can compare with what you get by trying them out to compare if you're actually on the right track. So this is question one and two. So next there's question three. This is question three. Then this is question number four that you can actually try out. So the answers are right there. And then I have question number six and lastly, question number seven. So compare your answers to what you see here in brackets and make sure you're on the right track. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope the video really, really helped you. I hope the numbers were sufficient for you. If this video was of help to you, feel free to give the video a like, a thumbs up, and then feel free to share the video with all those that you can and help them out if the video really, really helped you. And then you can leave a comment down in the comment section for me and I'll get time to reply to you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.